In the previous tutorial, we created a simple but pretty cool instrument. And today we'll create a custom GUI for it so that it looks cool like the other devices in M Sound Factory. And it's remarkably quick and simple using the new custom GUI editor. So let's get started. First, go to the edit screen and press menu. On easy screen, you can do the same thing, but you need to hold control or command on Mac while pressing the menu and select custom GUI editor. Select the output device. And click load device so that M Sound Factory actually loads it, just in case it's not loaded already. What we'll do next is create a custom GUI for a single tab. So we also need to specify the tab name. In our case, wobbling base. The rest of the settings are not relevant now. Let's save the current settings as a custom GUI project. Later, I can load it using the load button. There will be one project for every custom GUI tab you make. You may create a custom GUI for as many tabs as you want in each device. Back to the graphics. We need a decent background for a start. Click load background and select an image. Notice the options below. Whenever the width or height is specified, the designer will make sure the background is properly sized by cropping and resizing the image. 1400 is the default width, and it's highly recommended to keep it that way so that all instruments have a similar width. Vertically, it's up to you, but the taller the image is, the bigger the chance a scroll bar will be necessary. In our case, the image is a bit too short vertically, so perhaps we could try again and specify a height of, say, 1400 pixels as well. A nice rectangular image. Better. In the left bottom of the designer, there is a list of items. An item can be a text, button, knob, etc. So let's start with a title. Click the plus text button. It created a new text item and opened its settings. I can already start typing the text itself, so I enter the name of the instrument, my bass. And since it's title, I also set the font to title. On the main designer window, I resize the text appropriately. Back to the text properties. Let's explain a few parameters which are present in pretty much every item's settings. It's all about making sure everything is rendered as nicely as possible and is available at any size, including HDPI and normal displays. It's mainly about fonts, which can become ugly or even unreadable when rendered as an image and resized. So image ID is used whenever an item needs to be exported as an image after all. It is a rare thing actually, and if that will be the case, the engine will tell you that when exporting the GUI. So I generally keep it blank. Target is the multi-parameter the item is associated with. A title is just a title, so nothing to do here either. Render text to background is an important option, which makes the item drawn to the background, if that makes any sense at all. You may want to disable it in some cases when an item is associated with a multi-parameter, which can be disabled. Finally, export as control if possible, kind of overrides the previous option and makes the engine try to render everything vectorially. This is ideal when it comes to visual quality, but it's not always possible. It cannot be done if you supply your own images, for example, but mainly it's about fonts. So how do the fonts work here? The fonts panel provides access to 10 freely adjustable font settings you can use in the project. Every item that needs to render a text will have one of these associated. We used the font title for the single item we have so far. So let's click it. Most settings here are purely visual except for one. Enable global fonts switch, which is active only for the title font by default. This option lets the designer access all of the fonts installed on your system. If I disable it, the list will become much shorter and will only contain the fonts installed with Melda production plugins. If this option is enabled, the designer cannot be sure the selected font will be available on every computer, so it will render the text as an image. 
I'll use this font for the title and make it bigger. Let's go back to the text item settings. I can either right click on it or on the item in the items list. So let's set up the appearance. I'd like the text black since the background is light. The text item provides some effects, such as outline and an outer glow. If I enable use of any effects, the text won't be available for vectorial rendering, but I just like some glow for the titles, so I'll do that anyways. This means the text including the effects will be rendered to the background image. So, let's make a few knobs. Click plus knob. Move it to somewhere. Set the target to minimum. It automatically changes the knob name. There are many nice looking knobs available as the so-called templates. So let me just choose some. Colorize panel lets you change the color of the knob in various ways. I like this one. I want it to show its name, so I enable name. And the color needs to be black again. First knob is done. I can now duplicate it a few times for other controls. Right click on each and change the target. Depth. Now rate. And this one could show the units, so I enable the units panel. Which makes the units to be displayed inside the knob and set the color to black. Shape should display some text, which is quite long, so I'll use the units item instead. Set the target. Enable the templates so that it has some background. And make it look good. I can now select all the items of the wobbling panel by shift and clicking on them or using the items list. Then it's handy to use the color markers. These will improve the workflow as they act as sort of folders. By making all these controls say orange, whenever I want to select all of them later, I can just click the arrow under the orange color. Next, the unison panel. Create a panel and place it somewhere. It uses quite a sexy modern blur background by default. A text as title. Place it into the panel. Set the name. Section. Color. Done. Duplicate the rate knob two times and move them to the unison panel. Set targets. Done. The unison panel also has an enable switch, so a button is needed. There are various types of buttons and several specifically designed as on-off buttons.
I need to disable the text though. To make things systematic, select all Unison Panel Controls and mark them green. I can reorder the items in the items list, by the way. Let's also make the Monster Panel. So let's duplicate the entire Unison Panel, move it somewhere else, and set a different color marker. Delete the Enable switch. Rename the title. Delete one knob, attach the depth to the other. Create a selector for the type parameter. Attach the type, set some visual properties. Vertical layout would fit better here. Done. It is worth mentioning that you can use the arrow keys to move items. If you hold Control or Command on Mac, you will be able to move items by single pixels instead of the default 8 pixel snap grid. If you hold Alt, the item will be resized instead of moving. I could continue creating more controls, but you get the idea. It's only up to you how far you want to go with the details. Time to export the results. First, save the project, just in case. And click Export. At this point, the export may fail and tell you that some items need an image ID. It's probably because you used a global font or some custom images. Or it may tell you that some item doesn't have a target so you need to set it up. A knob without a target doesn't make sense after all. Click the Load Device button so that M Sound Factory reloads the instrument with the new GUI. And here we go, a brand new custom GUI. So what exactly did the designer export? Let's see. Hold Control or Command on Mac and click Menu. Select Open Device Folder. Navigate to our instrument. Next to the M instrument file, there's an XML file with definition of the GUI. You can view that in any plain text editor in case you're interested. And there's also a folder with the same name and a dot prefix, commonly used for hidden folders. Inside, there are four images. It's the same image, in fact, the background with title, available in four sizes to maximize the visual quality in various displays and GUI sizes. Below this video, there's a link to a repository of all the factory instrument GUI projects in case you want to check them out. That's all. Have fun creating your own custom GUIs for your instruments.